निकिता जैन बायोटेक्नोलॉजी आईटीबी सो हाउ टू ओवरकम इमोशनल डिपेंडेंसी एंड लोनलीनेस नो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल देर आर नॉट सेवरल टाइप्स ऑफ डिपेंडेंसीज दीज टाइप्स आर very superficial we might say i have material dependency i have financial dependency i have physical dependency i have emotional dependency i have spiritual dependency i mean dependency is dependency who is dependent all dependency comes from the fundamental sense of incompleteness of the i we are born feeling that something is not quite right about us even the newborn baby carries that deep belief obviously not consciously Hmm. and it is that sense of imperfection or uh, incompleteness that drives us through life that's what makes most people do whatever they do in their lifetimes so we acquire knowledge we acquire social certification we get into several kinds of relationships we procreate we amass wealth we do this do that build a house build a mausoleum for ourselves we do all these things fundamentally why do we do any or all of these things because we are not convinced that we are all right hmm? the i tendency is a raging dissatisfaction against itself i am greatly dissatisfied with whom with my own being with my own existence i'm not okay i'm not okay why am i not okay don't ask me that i'm born like that <laughs> has something occurred to you to make you feel that you are not all right no i have occurred to myself and that's what makes me feel that i'm not all right not that some event has happened to me the event that has happened is me me meaning my birth not that something has happened to me and is making me feel bad about myself no the event of my existence itself makes me feel bad about myself i am born feeling bad about myself i am born feeling hungry and dissatisfied when i was born i cried Nah. That's the human condition. Why am I here? That's the first thing that occurs to the kid, huh? The newborn infant. Why am I here? What did I do to deserve this? Hmm? What did the newborn ask, mommy? now who did this and now you know what we spend our entire life the rest of our life for we spend it trying to overcome the botched up work that we are it's like this i mean 
I am the output of something quite shoddy. It needs to be amended, corrected, rectified. And our entire lifetimes are just a desperate attempt at rectification. I am born incorrect, I have to, you know, take care of myself. And there is ample proof to show that we are born incorrect. Obviously, we are. Don't teach the child language and the child would have an underdeveloped mind. The human child requires almost two decades of education. Look at the amount of effort that goes into the rectification. Even before you can really step out into the world, you require two decades of training. So obviously you are not born all right, right? Some part of it is biological. Hmm? And the other part is social. Your hands extend only this much. Your eyes can see only this much. Your memory is limited to this much. Your intellect is only this sharp and no more. So all this is biological incompleteness or imperfection. And then there is the social sense of imperfection that is imposed upon you. Hmm? You have a particular color or ethnicity or nationality so you are probably not all right or a little bit all right but nothing about your nationality or color or gender or ethnicity can make you fully all right even if you belong to the most developed of countries there would be somebody prepared to point at something obnoxious about your country. So you take that in. Okay. I'm not all right for this reason. I'm not all right for that reason. Getting it? And that's what leads to both of these things that Nikita, you are mentioning in your question. Loneliness and dependency. Loneliness fundamentally means add something to me make something sit next to me affix something to me glue me to something superimpose something on me Magnify me. Are you getting it? Without that addition, without that amplification, I'm not okay, I'm not good enough. It's not as if it is something that specifically happens to you when you are 26. You are born with this feeling. Again, go back to the infant. Does not see her mother for two hours and starts wailing. Is that not loneliness? 
and it's not something sexual as you might be misled into believing being a 26 year old it says that even if you are just 26 days old you still require the warmth of a human body next to you otherwise you know you start mm, that's what is born loneliness and dependency and it will continue may you live till 126 you will find that loneliness still haunts you the same kind of loneliness that you experienced when you were 26 days old are you getting it so the disease is deeper then we think we feel oh it's about a young person probably looking for a friend or a mate no 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 it's an existential problem we are lonely because we exist we are dependent why because we exist how to challenge this problem then then you have to exist in a different way altogether right now what exists is the body identified and socially identified ego that's what is born thankfully thankfully an alternative exists the option to live not as the ego but as something beyond the ego exists and if that option does not exist then life is absurd then as the absurdists would say or other question I mean why live at all is life worth it and surely life is not worth living if there is no possibility of freedom from the ego right if there is no possibility of freedom from the ego then every passing day is just another 24 hour experience in servility and anxiety no and slavery and depression right and not only are you experiencing that frustration today you know very well that this frustration is your fate for all days to come then as many have said and done suicide appears the best option if life offers no possibility of liberation from the pain called ego then why live at all but as we said thankfully that possibility is very much there only when you exercise that possibility is freedom from dependency and loneliness possible and that's a deeper exercise the the shallow way is to fight loneliness mm, through distraction and if you distract yourself in a thousand ways 
then you can keep loneliness at bay at least for you know a certain time now you could go to a beer bar and spend a few hours with your friends and you are no more lonely are you lonely in that duration you're not hmm or you could watch the highlights of the last world cup soccer pretending that you do not know the score line hmm oh my god who's going to win or you could do a thousand other cute and stupid things to keep you busy that's a shallow way of negotiating with loneliness dependency etc and i'm talking of them in the same breath they are much the same thing the real way is to know that as long as we continue to feed our false sense of self we are condemning ourselves to more and more loneliness more and more dependency and we are necessitating therefore more and more of anti depressant material an antidepressant is not merely a pill an antidepressant is much more like a visit to the shopping mall hmm or waiting for the friday release that's an antidepressant clinically only a small proportion of people are depressed existentially we are all born to born depressed mm -hmm. so there are some who have been diagnosed with depression and there are some who are is symptomatically depressed but depressed we all are without doubt except for the liberated ones we all are depressed in some cases depression has shown up erupted in full ferocity in other cases depression is lying latent hidden waiting for the right time to raise its fangs Hmm? so nikita i would invite you to come to vedant i'll invite you to go to all the fundamental spiritual scriptures come to kapil rishi come to kanad rishi come to krishna and you are born in a jain family come to kund kund come to mahavir to parshanath they all are there for you they were people with a lot of love and they have ensured that their bodily absence does not 
enfeeble their mission. They have left behind rich and voluminous scriptures and accounts, questions and teachings. And there is a higher pleasure in being with them. Once you develop the taste of being with a Krishna or a Mahavir, you will forget all this loneliness and dependency business. Because loneliness cries for a person just like you or an activity in your own dimension. That's what loneliness and dependency cry for, right? When you have the company of these geniuses, then you feel fulfilled. Then in fact, not only are you not lonely or dependent, actually a lot of filth from your life is expunged. Forget about you saying, who else can be added to my life? The question changes. The question says, now who all are unnecessarily still present in my life? From an instinct towards addition, you find that you are now more concerned towards liberation, negation, purification. You don't want to bring in more people into your life. Now you rather want to purify yourself of the people or things or concepts that are already in your life. You are not adding now, you are actually subtracting. You are subtracting actually because now your space has been occupied by somebody quite large, immense. Hmm? That somebody is not a person. That somebody is just, just somebody. But he is quite voluminous, expansive, immense. And to make space for him, he, he is not a, he is not a, not a male. But I have to use some word, so I am using. But to make space for him, you have to evict all the nonsense, all the clutter hmm, that is sitting upon your precious mind space. So you just tell all of them to leave, leave, leave. There is somebody else I want to be with. Hmm? This is the opposite of loneliness. In loneliness you are looking at the world with desperate eyes. Somebody please give me company. Somebody, somebody please, please, please. In the state I am talking of, you are looking at yourself and asking, how the hell I have allowed these two rats to still be present in my room? My room is almost completely empty of all kinds of pests now. There used to be a pest called that dude. There used to be a pest called 
my BFF. There used to be a pest called my distant cousin. And they were all of these occupying my room and my mental space. And I've shooed all of them away, rather most of them away. But these two little rats, they're still jumping around, attracting my attention. One is my ex, who keeps stalking me on Instagram some days. The other is this new contender, who keeps sending me this occasional feeler. Hey, which brand of coffee do you like? What? You doing cookery course or something? So these two rats are still left to be pushed out. So you see the whole thing has drastically changed. From being a beggar in front of the world, now you are asking the world to keep away. Isn't that a position of power? Immense power? Not that you have become a world hater or something. It's just that now you have learned discretion. Now you know who should be allowed in the sanctity of your room. Your room is a sacred space, is it not? Do you allow all kinds of rats and lizards and cockroaches to populate it? Do you? By the way, I have nothing against lizards. I have 26 of them in my room. But, but here, when I say lizard and cockroach, then you know what I mean, right? Bring the big ones in. Without them, life is anyway not worth living. 